My beloved brothers and sisters, on the globe, several incidents have occurred that make it necessary for us to speak about them and to guide the Muslims in their regard. One of these was the siege that happened in Sydney, Australia, and the other was the massacre of school children in Peshawar, Pakistan. And it's important for us to know that as Muslims, we don't understand what part of Islam these people are following. In fact, we don't even understand what Islam they are following. Because Islam is a totally different religion from what these people are practicing. Islam does not teach the killing of innocent people. It does not teach the killing of children and women. And in fact, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was entering Makkah al-Mukarramah in the year known as Amul Fath, at the victory of Makkah, he made it quite clear that those who put their weapon down as well shall not be touched and harmed. These are innocent people. Also, he makes clear mention of not only the prohibition of hurting or harming women, children, the elderly, those who are in their homes, those who are in the churches, but he even speaks about the destruction of trees and infrastructure. So those who destroy infrastructure are not following Islam. Those who want to destroy the ecosystem are not following Islam. Those who want to harm women, children, the elderly, and those who are in the masajid, and those who are not at war with them, innocent people, they are not following Islam. And this is why it's important for us to speak about this, because as frustrated as we might be, because of what might be happening on Muslim lands, it does not give us the right to go out and hurt people who are not at all involved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He protect us. The first issue I want to address is the issue of hostage taking in Islam. What has happened and what is happening? If you take a careful look, someone has a problem with a certain nationality and they decide to pick up anyone of the same nationality and kill him off or use him as a hostage. Which part of Islam teaches that? Which hadith or which Quranic verse teaches that? When a person is innocent, not at all involved, there are people, whether they are in Iraq, whether they are in Syria, whether they are in other places, some of them have gone forth in order to assist humanitarian crisis we all know about. There are people who have gone to help and they have gone under the flag of well-known Islamic organizations as well. And after a while, the man is taken. And after a while, just because of his nationality, he is then made a big issue of and an issue of hostage and so on. And after a while, he is executed in the name of Islam. You and I are not involved. You and I condemn that and we do not condone it at all. So this barbaric system is definitely un-Islamic. If you take a look at the Islam we have been, we have been following since we were born, we have known of a peaceful Islam. We live with the Muslims, with the non-Muslims, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians and the others, the Hindus, people who don't even have a faith. Where have we ever had dispute with them in terms of living and life and their freedom? The reality is as Muslimin, no, we don't. If you have a problem with someone, you may report them to the authorities and then it will be handled by the courts. You will either get justice at the courts or sometimes maybe the courts may find someone that you believe is guilty, innocent. In that case, you leave it for the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the judge. But you do not take it into your own hands to say now because the court has found this person innocent and according to me the person is guilty, let me harm them, let me kill them, let me hurt them, let me rob from them. That is absolutely incorrect and it is un-Islamic. If you take a careful look at Pakistan and what happened in Pakistan just two days ago where more than a hundred little children were killed. For what? What was the purpose? Why? So someone might argue that, oh, these were the children of military men. That is no justification whatsoever. Or, or, or what, you know, whatsoever. These are innocent children. The whole globe acknowledges they are innocent. Yes, they are. There are others who have 
pillaged and slaughtered our own children. We know, but two wrongs do not make a right. Remember this. Someone sometimes might want to think and try and justify to say, you know, they are bombing us every day. They are killing our children every day. They are doing this on a daily basis with unmanned aircraft and various other things. My brother, my sister, we understand we are paining, we are hurting, we are bleeding. We want to solve the problem. We are trying to sort things out. But at the same time, it does not give us the right and it does not justify the killing of innocent children. If someone has murdered someone else, subhanallah, it does not give us the right to murder a third party altogether. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah grant us guidance and ease. It's important we understand this. The world is bleeding today and people are blaming the Muslims because from amongst us, some are being brainwashed. Brainwashed by what? They do not understand verses of the Quran. They don't understand the asbabun nuzul or the reasons of revelation of the verses of the Quran. They don't understand the wabil or they don't understand how to extract rules and regulations from verses of the Quran. They read something, someone shows them something, and next thing they are prepared to give up their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. We should be giving up our lives, striving to earn the, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through obedience through salah. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went to Ta'if. Look at his example. They beat him up personally, physically. He was bleeding and the angels came to him to say, if you want, we can crush these people between the mountains. What did he say? He said, I am sent as a mercy. Uh, we don't want that to happen. If they don't accept, perhaps their children will accept. Patience, sabr. So it's important for us to know this. In Ta'if, Rasulullah sallallahu was patient. He made a dua for them, a beautiful dua. He took, uh, he took the knock, meaning they, he did not make a bad dua against them. And at the same time, he made a good dua. Oh Allah, if these people are not accepting, at least from their progeny, from their offspring, from their children, let people accept the deen. In a few years time, there was uh, a victory in that region. Today, take a look at Ta'if and tell me how many non-Muslims there are there. Why? There was patience. There was a lot of forbearance. There was a system of da'wah. People have lost the plot and we think that the non-Muslims are our enemies. The minute we think that, automatically we will not be able to call them towards Islam. And they will get the wrong image of Islam. My brothers and sisters, Islam, it means peace. It stands for peace. It promotes peace. It teaches peace. And everything that you will achieve is peace. In this world, peace. In the next, peace. In your grave, peace. With your children, peace. In your environment, peace. That is Islam. Anything that destroys that in any way is not Islam. Remember this.